to the Esmeric Art Studio. Today's project is going to be another journal cover or a notebook cover using the metal tape and it's such an easy way to do that whether it's for a gift or for yourself. So for me personally, um, you know, I keep track of everything in a notebook. I literally write everything down and um, so this one is nearly full so I thought well let me get a step ahead and prepare the next one the cover so long um, and then it will be ready for when that one is full I can absolutely use just the plain one but why do we want to do that if we have the means to just make it nice for ourselves follow along and let's see how the cover is going to turn out today today's project we're going to need the following we're going to need some tape um, I'm going to work with copper tape as well as the plain metal tape that you can get at your hardware store I'm going to use um, these are tape that you use when you're doing mudding um, for the walls on the drywall some of that just to give texture I'm going to, well, we're going to use some glue. We are going to need our tools, which is most probably we'll use a roller. I'm not exactly sure if we are, but we'll see how the project pans out. A paper stump. I've got two stylus here, this little plastic one as well as the Teflon tip one. And I also have a metal stylus here, so we'll use them. We, of course, going to need our notebook. And then I have a couple of other things here, just again to add some texture and some height. So I've cut two pieces of cardstock, or this is actually cardboard. It's the backing of some of these pads that you buy. So this one is three and a quarter by eight inches and it's just to fit the notebook this notebook is a five by eight and a half i will put everything in the description below all the supplies and then i've cut another piece of cardboard because i would like to layer this up and i'm going to need going to add some extra with these little strips and then i was looking for something round to add and i couldn't find anything and I came upon this stash of old batteries that never made it to recycling. So it's still here in a little container and I thought, oh, perfect, I can use that. So I'm going to use that for my little circles and then a little bit of bling that's also going to be covered with the um, metal tape. And on top of that, we are going to need some punches. If you don't have the punches, you can just um, cut out little circles. You don't even need to cut out circles. You can cut squares and work with squares as well. It really doesn't matter. And I just realized another thing that we're going to need is either a Sharpie. Um, I'm going to first try with a silver Sharpie. And if my Sharpie... Well, I know it's almost dry. If the Sharpie doesn't do the job, then I will grab some silver um, paint just to paint. And what we're going to do with the Sharpie is I... Oh, yeah, no, it works. I just want to cover this area here so that it doesn't stay red. First, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover this whole area under the um, wire with the silver sharpie and yep it looks like my sharpie is not gonna make it all the way so I might just grab yep let me just quickly grab silver paint but the paint and I'm just using a piece of plastic that I found in my garbage bag as sort of a palette and so next oh I wanted actually a thinner paint brush just get another one yeah all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I am going to paint this silver doesn't really do a good job but at least it's not going to be that overpowering um, red I might just give it another coat towards the end <music> Paint.
painted the one side I didn't paint the inside nor did I paint the back that's not um, gonna matter to me I just want to do the one side there you can also remove this um, there is a way that you can do it you can start from the back and you can painstakingly remove each and every one there and then just put it back in but um, I don't think it's worth the time to do that personally for this um, journal cover or notebook cover so the next step is I'm just going to stick some of this down and measure it and I'm going to cut it so this has a little bit of uh, glue backing to it the thing is just mine is so old already it's that we have left from a renovation we did a couple of years ago and now I don't know where's my big scissors oh here it is oh and this is what we were going to need in the supply list to is scissors um, and I'm going to do a double layer of this and then once this is done and it doesn't really matter if these don't line up because we're going to cover it with the other cardboard pieces that is there I'm going to do this and then I'm going to glue down my bottom one I think I'm going to go yeah that like that and then on top of that I will glue this one down and then I'm going to glue down the three little batteries now I'm really glad it never made to it to recycling because now I can use it and I'm going to glue these ones down now what happened to my oh there it is and then this piece of bling I'm going to glue down here and then once this is all done we are going to start with the metal tape um, oh you know what I actually think I'm I'm wondering um, no I'm not going to glue these down I think I'm going to wrap them separately with the metal tape and then put them together or just lay them on top of these yeah I think that's what I'm going to do so going to glue this this and this the plain stick glue to stick this down but um, it didn't stay so that's why I just grabbed some pieces of my sukwong tape and now it is staying put and I've also added a thin strip another strip of this because when I looked at it it was just something about the composition that wasn't really right for me because um, of this on the inside I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this tape on the inside and again I'm just going to put it down I'll do this and I'm going to cover that with the metal tape as well I'm not going to do anything else it will just have the texture I guess I could have just done the plain metal tape but I think it will look nice just having this little bit extra detail so for yeah I'm more or less trying to line up the little I guess horizontal lines that is here and I'm just gonna put another one going to start with the aluminum tape and I'm also going to open my book and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the sides of the book or the um, the journal and 
No, maybe I must do that last. Um, no, I think I'm going to do that last. So I've just changed my mind. And the reason why I've changed my mind is just, I was just thinking, you know, as we're going to line up, then you can have a nice, even um, border around it with this. So seeing that I have this done, um, let me just measure this and cut. Sometimes it's like, my brain doesn't want to function. I don't know if you have days like that. So. And again, this one, I'm just going to do the long strips. I'm not going to pay or add any details underneath. It will be just the texture from the um, the metal tape. Oh, not the metal tape, the drywall tape. Just doing the edges because once I've got that down, I can overlap because that's important. You need to overlap your tape. This one, put it around about there. So even if it is a little bit too short, when we come back in the end and we're going to do the outsides, that will cover these the open areas. Oh, come on, seriously. And if things like this happen, because guaranteed it's going to happen, and you do have those pieces that is breaking or tearing, it's perfectly fine. Just keep it together and lay it on top of each other or let it overlap the previous one. And flatten it down and come in with your paper stump and flatten it again. Who's going to use the copper tape? So what I'm going to do, and I've done some tests, um, yeah, I'm going to use the one and a three quarter um, punch and I'm going to punch a copper circle and I will work with that around. Then I'm going to come and I'm going to punch another circle. I think this is about three quarters of an inch. And then once I've done with that, I'm going to use the one and a quarter and I'm going to punch it again and I will have this um, circle. So this will be copper, this will be silver, and then I'm just going to put it around so it will look something like that. And it's just gonna go off the, the top one down to the bottom one. I can't get it completely right just because when you do um, cut a circle, you can only get it a certain depth in, it doesn't, go in through all the way. I wish they want to make longer reach um, punches that would really help but and again you can also just cut it out with your um, scissors the circles if you don't have if you have a circle stencil just or use anything that you have around lying around quarters a loony or a toony and just draw your circle and cut it out. Okay, I'm going to start with the center one or the middle one and you're just going to lay it over your um, battery or your disc that you are using 
and you're going to push it down using your paper stump and you can go back with your finger for the rest of it but just make sure that you have get up and close with your paper stump first and as I expected the tape did tear But I think I'm just going to leave it as is because for now what is going to happen is once we start doing the blackening it the blackening will go in there so it will eliminate well not really eliminate but the tear won't be as noticeable and then I'm just going to come in with my little stylus and So this little battery has a nice design to it as well. You could have used it the other way around too. And I'm going to come in with this stylus, the metal one. And now I'm working on that section there. So I'm trying to push the tape in there. And that's why I'm working with the metal one because it's nice and thin and it can lay within that little natural groove that the battery is making. Yeah, there's actually so much that we can do with recycle things. Sometimes we just have to think a little bit what we can use them for to keep it out of the landfall or even out of the recycling. I don't really know what they do with the batteries when you take them for recycling, how they get rid of it. I'm going to cover these um, strips that I would like to put on top and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure it just to see how long the strip needs to be Yeah, my mind you, I can fold it over and I'm going to fold it over and fold it over again. So, roughly about there. And again, if the bottom is not going to be covered completely, it is not going to be making a difference because we are going to glue it down as long as what the top and the sides all well covered okay so let's see if we can do this without tearing or breaking or have it all weird okay and i'm just going to lay it down And I think I'm going to, oh, I don't know, oh wait, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the sides, whoops, no, oh, there's nothing to fold over on this side, <laughs> okay. So do not cut everything away. And just going to fold it over like that. In the worst case scenario, if you do what I've just done, you can always just come in with your Sharpie or with the um, silver paint and you would be able to touch it up. And I'm just going to fold this over. Fold 
over. Actually, the, this one that is not covering the ends is actually a neater um, wrap. So for now, I'm going to keep this just plain. I'm not going to add any texture to it. I will see, you know, once we put it together, if it leans towards having some texture or just plain. And this is the bottom. Okay. This corner just don't look too good. Okay. I'm going to do the middle one where I'm going to add the bling on. I'm going to do that one with the copper and the only reason is so because this, I don't know if you can see it, because the the batteries is covered with copper, I was thinking well to do more or less the same with this one then where we have the detail on so that will be copper as well. So this one I'm just going to go and cover with the um, metal tape again or the solar tape with the middle one or the one that's going to go in the center I am first going to now the whole thing comes loose. Today is definitely not my day to try and work with tape or glue. I don't know if you have days like that as well. It's no matter what you do, it just feels like everything is going wrong. Okay. So I'm first going to put this bling down and try and get it as center as possible and then once this is down I'm going to come in with the copper tape measure it And then again, from here, it is going to be the same as with the other two. Once you are this far, you're going to come in with your paper stump and you're going to flatten around. To accentuate the little bobbles that's there and move in between them as well and I know this little bobbles well I call it bobbles but it's really not bubbles because it has an indent so I would go in with my paper stamp and just press down to make sure it goes in the little holes that is there. When you look at it, it doesn't really look like it is has the indents or the holes, but it does. Okay, from there I'm going to use my purple burnishing or stylus. And I'm just going to go around it on both the sides. And then once I'm done with that, I will come in between the little bobbles. And with that done, you can always do another step, which is coming in with your stylus, your metal stylus, 
and oh this looks nice actually so I'm just going to make little squirly whirlies inside the little bubbles yeah and that does look a little bit better well actually a little bit it looks a lot better when you work with things like this don't be afraid to try things um, it can either work or not work and the worst that can happen if it doesn't work you just redo it or you try something else and do exactly the same on the opposite side and there's a couple of places as I'm working I don't know if it's noticeable where I actually break through the tape but again I'm not going to patch that up just because when we do it's the blackening it will work it will cover it up yeah. so there you go our free pieces is or accent pieces is done a tip when you punch out things like this the circles or squares or whatever it is even although it's not completely um, symmetrical what you can do is keep these ones because you can always use it in another project so for instance when you use another project you can put this down and then you can use something else as an accent on the inside maybe cut um, now I oh wait just one maybe you know cut another circle in there or you know anything like that put a jewel in there but use it keep it and use it for another project back to today's project what I've done so far is I have cut strips of the metal tape and I'm going to be working with similar ones today you can do random shapes but for today I would like to stay pretty much with the same size and the same shapes so I have cut a couple of these ones and they are three inches long and then what I've done with them is I have cut them down the middle or the center and no it doesn't want to go right okay so I cut them down in the center so I have all my pieces looks the same they are the same um, length and width so this is about I don't know how many inches but they are three inches wide and well just under all three inches and this tape is just just under two inches wide so I kept three of the strips <laughs> I did not um, oh wait there is yep so let me just cut another strip here so I'm going to start off with three strips that is the full width and then I'm just going to fold everything around it with the thinner strips so I think I'm going to start with a strip over there and I'll place one here and I'll place one there or maybe I'll place one there and one here yeah I think I'm going to do it this way and I'm, I don't mind if there is um, red sticking out here because right at the end we're going to cover the sides. Three more things to cut or to punch and that is the little circles that I would like to have. So I'm going to punch three of these small little ones and I'm going to move them so that I make sure that I have enough space around it to create the circles i don't think i needed to go that far apart but the way that my day is going today i think that is the best way to go and i think oh this is one and a quarter that i've used so now i'm just going to punch it more or less so that it's right on the end there 
and then I have my three little circles So the whole idea with the circles is when I, you know, with the tape, once I've got that down, then I'm going to place the circles just sort of to round this off again. I'm going to start with my three big pieces first and I'm going to put them down and once they are down, I will work with the rest and just overlapping and lining them up. And I'm using my paper stump to get it in there and to work it down there and again to work it into the next section or to line up there. So when you do it this way, you still, you always will have the possibility of it tearing there. But this one is just, you sort of eliminate it a little bit. And use your paper stump, really work it in. And then you can come in with your burnishing tool or your plastic stylus. You can also use your Teflon tip tool for this. And again, I have my tape that has a little bit of a tear in there and just work your edges down as well. I'm not going to be worried about filling up any of those stairs now. I will look right at the end once everything is done and then I will start filling up where I think I need to fill up. So for this one, I'm going to come in with the metal stylus and I'm just going to refine it. You can also use the opposite side, the little bubble of the or the round ball I should say of your um, stylus so I'm going to oh look at this it picks up the texture of the um, I don't know if you can see it picks up the texture of the journal cover as well and that's also a little well it's not really circles more ovals but that looks really good as well so an, another layer of um, texture. Okay, so I'm going to put this three down and then we will move on to the next step. going to start filling in all these and I'm going to make sure that they overlap and I'm going to start from the top working my way down to the bottom which means each and every one will overlap on exactly the same way so the bottom one the next one will be overlapping that one and oh you know what I wonder I don't want the overlapping to go to the oh yeah no I think I'm rather going to do this I think the overlapping is going to go down to the bottom so that it looks like it's layered and as for this I think on the the side ones I think that I'm just going to do random I'm not going to be too concerned about that so some might be on top and um for instance, this one might come in like that. So yeah, these ones I'm not going to be too concerned about. But I am also going to pay attention to the ring. So that when I place my metal tape, 
that it doesn't go on the inside of the ring because I would like to keep that around the battery. Um, I would like to keep that copper. So I'm going to use this as guides when I do put my metal down. to have everything cascade down um, but it looks that is going to be a little bit tricky because that's going to be so much measuring and um, placing so I've decided you know what I'm going to do this and some will be um, overlapping in a different direction because otherwise it is going to take me forever to figure everything out I would need to dry fit everything and then start taping them down and so I'm just going to go now but I will make sure that it's still going to be um, sort of symmetrical and in straight lines. I've concentrated on the one side so this one is basically done except for to put the rim over or the um, border that I'm going to do around so next step is just going to fold these in and what I realized was there is going to be little triangles that is going to be visible on all the sides so I made the decision I'm not going to cut pieces and fold them up the blackening will just do the job there when you get towards the end or a corner and you need to fold your tape around on both sides what you can do is similar than what you cover a tile or things like that you're going to cut out that little square stuck in my fingers and you're just going to fold over the one side and and then you can fold over the other side you can actually cut this one at a little bit of an angle just to get a neat and tidy fold over and that will be covered once we start doing the border around yep so that's one way to do it and just as always make sure that you really Put your tape down well I've got a strip of metal tape that is a little bit longer than what the length of the um, journal is and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this, another strip off here that I'm that we can put around here and then once this and this one is covered we will do the top and the bottom so it doesn't really matter the width of this one um, I think that should work and I find also if you cut metal tape with a cutter it is best to cut it with the paper side to the top rather than having the metal to the top. working with this I use the plastic stylus 
and I was just running it through these little texture or little texture squares that's there so I just want to do exactly the same where I've added this tape now so I did with this exactly the same I came in with my with the whole area here I did it with my paper stamp and once that was done I came in with the plastic stylus and there you go I'm going to do exactly the same on this side I'm going to try and line this up as straight as what I can which is not always possible try and keep the book straight I'm going to give it too wide of a border so I'm just going to go Cutting these at a triangle or at a angle, like a triangle. I'm just going to fold the sides. I'm going to turn this away. this side away and again just going to push this over like that and fold it down and from there work it in with my paper stump and I'm just going to need in the corners here I'm going to do exactly the same <clears throat> excuse me with the bottoms so I'm going to cut uh, actually you know what yeah I'm going to cut it the size and then I will cut it in half and again I'm going to use my trimmer just to cut it more or less in half And once this is cut in half, I will do exactly the same. I'm just going to fold it over. I was going to do the top and the bottom the same width as that one. But then I was looking down and I saw all the red there. So I've decided to take it and to put it straight up against that um, cardboard. And see if this way, if he doesn't want to cover a little bit of that red at least. And then from here, I'm going to cut this off there to fold over. And cut this one at the angle. And... I'm going to fold this over too. Start from the center and just push it out towards the ends. And again, work it in with your paper stump. I 
will do exactly the same to the top part there. Next is putting down the circles. I hope it's going to stay a circle because it's really flimsy. Oops. Should have thought about that before the time. But sometimes when we think these things through in our head, we don't think about all the other possibilities that can happen. Okay, this is now a little bit skew. Let's see if we can move it. It is so sticky. And flimsy. I think it's more the flimsiness than the stickiness. I wonder if I grab a um, tweezer if that will help. Oh yeah, it looks like this might do the trick. Yep, tweezer does work better. I had to make a decision if I'm going to fill up those little um, triangles. I think I did mention it before, now I can't remember. And um, so I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to live with it. I'm not going to be so finicky. So I'll be back as soon as the last one is down. But if you do do this, just know that absolutely there is going to be a struggle when it's so flimsy and so skinny. Next, I'm going to adhere these little strips. I've added some Sukwon tape to the back and Another thing is I didn't really think this through either because this one is quite long so it might catch on something it's standing or hanging over. Let me just put this down here and spacing. Going down. is I'm going to use a cup and ball tool and um, that's if I can find one and just have a look no that's the big oh, there's the one I'm looking for so with that there I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this and I'm going to make little marks in here as well just to mimic those ones so I'm starting in the center off to the sides and let me just put one in the center or more or less in the center more or less in the center and I'm just going to fill up this whole row and I'm also going to do exactly the same with the small little one just always look when you work with something to see if you would like to add some more detail um, you know especially when it comes to blackening with the metal tape you can really bring out a lot of detail yeah I think this is enough and I, I 
very tempted to do it around here too. Let's see. I'm starting specifically with the center one so that in case I don't like it, it's only on the center one then it looks like part of the design. Maybe I can do two in there. Oh yeah, now I think I'm going to continue on with this. This looks nice now. Working with something like this, um, if you have some details, try and incorporate that details on a different area because it really just brings a project um, together. As for blackening, which is going to be the next step, I'm not going to do any blackening on the inside. I'm just going to leave it as is. Before I start with the blackening, as I was looking at the corners, I was just thinking, you know, what I can do is right on each corner, um, well, not right on the corner, but just go in and add four little round marks there as well and what I think I'm going to do with these ones is I'm going to use my saw um, the stylus and I'm just going to put a little bit of a make a mark in there almost looking like a little rivet although this is very tiny you can't really see it but it will pick up with the blackening for blackening we are using a permanent water-based marker and we're going to color it in and as we are going to color in we are just going to wipe it away i'm going to work in sections with this one just because it's a bigger area and i don't want it to dry so i'm going to start from the one end almost probably work my way in sections from the furthest point to the point closest to me. step for this project would be to just seal it with a clear lacquer spray I'm using the ultra cover um, from Rust-Oleum just a clear gloss there is a satin available there's a matte available as well but I just prefer working with the um, gloss my notebook almost has like an industrial look to it and um, you know, when you work with metal tape, you could have accentuated where all the um, the tape is overlapping, but I don't didn't want to do too much detail. The copper little triangles that were sticking out there, it did bother me a little bit before we did the blackening, but once the blackening was done, it's not that noticeable. So yeah, as always, I'm very happy with the way that my notebook turned out. So thank you so much for spending time with me in the studio today. And always remember, the world of reality has its limits. The world of imagination is boundless.